Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 242nd of Korea Podcast. Our today's guest is Miss Samantha Interesting. She's a tra- traditional artist and designer from Sydney, Australia. And of course, before we go into the, you know, for contact, before we go into the signature questions of the podcast, let me just quickly mention that in the for contact section of the captions, you can find the links uh, to our link tree. Twitter, YouTube channel, and Instagram. And also, if you go to the link tree, you can find a tip jar, commission form, and you can also purchase prints. And also, there's a link to Patreon, which I think you should definitely you know check it out if you're interested in purchasing the prints like the stuff you're seeing above us right now on YouTube. And um, yeah, all right. How are we doing today? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm fine. And... Um, could you give us a little introduction on how we got into the world of you know, like visual arts and design? Like basically, tell us your origin story if you know how you became an artist. Okay, well, I reckon I've always considered myself an artist. You know, ever since I could hold a pencil, basically, I was drawing. You know, I have a whole folder full of drawings from preschool. So ever since then, you know, four years old, I've always been drawing. Um, I did drawing. I did visual arts all the way up until high school. You know, for the final exams um it was there you know I, I was exploring different things but um after high school is when I truly found like what I really enjoy drawing and you know not drawing what other people were telling me to do or stuff like that so video games really helped me realize what I really love to draw um which is particularly you know sci-fi fantasy and like those type of things especially mech you know robots that kind of stuff um and yeah, you know, I started my Instagram. Just I wasn't expecting it to really go anywhere. Um, I just wanted to post my art up, you know, and share my love for Destiny because that's where it started. Um, Destiny by Bungie. Um, and then yeah, like I slowly, I was consistent. I just you know drew, posted it up, you know, every couple of days, and now I am where I am now. <laughs> I would say. All right. Awesome. And like, in a sense, I think, you know, one of the people that, you know, especially your last post on Instagram, um, it might not be entirely like similar, you know, but I kind of got reminded of Yoji Shinkawa, I think. Uh, yeah, that kind of style. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah do, do you know Yoji Shinkawa, right? I don't, actually. <laughs> uh He's like one of the main concept artists in the Metal Gear se- series. He's like the oh, okay. right hand man. Yes. Of if if you look at his works, I'm sure it's gonna inspire you a lot. Honestly, like if okay. you can emu- listen, if you can emulate his, uh, I'm not saying that like as an artist, it's also so weird to ask someone to emulate an, another artist because that's kind of like an insult. <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, the point <laughs> is, you know, it, it, the point is, you know, if you can, you know, get inspiration from him and you know, add, it, add it as a spice to your work, it's gonna look a lot. Like a lot of people will want to buy more, you know. That's okay. what I'm saying, you know, because his his works are really minimal at the same time, but really beautiful, you know, mm-hmm. in a sense, yeah. And he's also okay. makes and you know all that stuff, yeah. I'm I, yeah. I'm sure you love his works. Yeah, I'll definitely look into it. But yeah, yeah, and all right, so. Were you originally studying art and design or you were pursuing another career path like, you know, earlier on when you were like, I don't know, wanted to go to college or uni? Like, how is that uh, situation, you know, pan down for you? Yeah, so um, I went to a high school that a lot of people don't do art. They don't do those type of, um, I don't know what you'd call them, but, you know, a lot of of my peers were doing the very academic subjects like after high school everyone was going everyone went to university or is still going to university you know either doing med uh, business law you know all those type of degrees um yeah so obviously when I was in high school you know reaching that point where I had to decide what I wanted to do I was kind of following the bet like you know following everyone else I was considering like stuff like engineering you know uh whatever I could really get into, but engineering was one of the things I was looking into. But then, I don't know, when it finally came around, I decided to do design. So I did a Bachelor of Design, but then I also coupled it with commerce, just as like a smarter choice, you know, add that in, get a little like the business knowledge as well, which I don't regret. It was a good choice. 
But yeah, so I literally just finished my last assessment for my whole degree on Friday. So I'm completely done now um, after four and a half years of studying. So yeah, I'm looking to, what I specialize in, in design at least is graphic design and 3D modeling, which is a bit different, you know, to what I do art wise, which is both good and bad, I would say. But right now I'm looking for, you know, some work in that kind of field. Um, if art doesn't really pan out, but I hope it does. <laughs> I mean, about art not panning out, I mean, you actually, like, you know, yourself has potential to, like, expand your, you know, business, even yeah. as an artist, you know? Like, I mean, you don't have to worry about that, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, well, let's see. How do you, like, see your art evolving in the next couple of years, like, in the future? Like, you know, are you, are you just going to focus on illustration and just perfecting that craft? Or do you want to, you know like expand on just maybe try your hands in concept art or in you know, environments and other stuff like, you know, or are you just because of the sake of, you know, of course, wanting to pay your bills, or are you just going to stick to the things that you're good at, you know? Like what other expansions are you going to do in terms of art? Yeah, I think um, it will be a, like a mix between the two. I think uh, right now I'm really at that stage where, yeah, I really want to perfect the whole illustration, you know, pen and pencil, that kind of stuff. And I'm getting there, but I personally believe that you can never reach, you know, full perfection. There's always more that you can do. There's always more, like, better ways that you can do things or, yeah, whether that's, like, efficiency or just, like, how, you know, you're approaching things, how it looks. But, yeah, so, like, in terms of perfecting that, that's more, yeah, to pay the bills um because that's what people know me for my illustrations but in the past like I've you know I, I do like crafts I do like making stuff I like hands-on stuff so you know I've done sculptures in the past so like if you scroll down on my insta far enough you'll see some like little figurines I've done I've done like a cat one from Halo Reach um it's out of clay you know that kind of stuff and it's different you know I've done a few commissions here and there for that so like there is a market, but it's a whole different skill set that I'd have to dedicate like the same amount of years that I put into drawing. Um, but now that I have more time, like I'm happy to do that. And same with oil painting. Um, that I do have a bit more experience in, but that goes more into like, I could see myself taking my painting into like concept art, as you said, or like environments, because that's how I usually tend to paint. I, I do those type of things. So, yeah, it's just a really a, a big balance between all of them. I, I do want to try bigger things, you know, um, also like both conceptually and physically. I do work on a bit of a small scale. So, you know, I've, I've talked about doing murals for my friends, you know, big wall pieces and all that kind of stuff. So I'm hoping to do that kind of stuff in the future. All right, and yeah, what was I gonna say? My memory has got gotten really bad. Oh my god, it was just at the tip <laughs> of my tongue two seconds ago. Jesus. Yeah, I mean, oh wait a second. Oh god, look, it actually doesn't come back. Oh my god, it's, it's so scary. Uh, oh my god, I need to get my brain was checked. It honestly, like the sculptures or the paintings. Oh yeah, I, I remember. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I remember. Okay. I remember. <laughs> um, yeah, what the meta I've been seeing in the past couple of years that I think it still is actually not really, it's actually underrated. Not many people like are going after it, which I'm kind of shocked. But if you're an artist who can get good at medium, like classic mediums of art, like oil painting, yes. sculptures, yes, yes. gouache, watercolor, yes. if you can get good at those, but try it on modern topics and subjects. Yes. Uh, yeah. Like it's imagine an oil yeah. oil painting of, I don't know, like, like, I don't know, like a famous landscape or a ship in Halo Universe. There's some guy out there who's going to pay $600 for that, at least. Yeah, I'm waiting for it. 
no 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 it, it, like it's so true like you know classical mediums like because if you think about it it's kind of like an out of box thing you know there was this thing i saw there was this rug like you know machine made rug carpets a small carpet like i think 80 by 30 or something i, I don't remember the dimensions but it was, it was like a small rug and it was a screenshot of a counter strike kind of map and game and there was the famous oh, operator yeah. and yeah. like something like that of course, some Counter Strike fan hundred percent is gonna buy that. It's gonna yeah. pay good money for it. It's kind of like yeah. a luxury item for them. And so, yeah, there's things like that, like you know, even with gouache, pastel, like just just things that people usually don't do because everyone can make cool things with digital art and all the techniques available. Yeah. But yes, that's on it. True. <laughs> but I don't know, like you know. But the thing is, the good thing is, majority of people are materialistic. Majority of people, you know. I am personally like a pretty minimalistic person. Like I don't. I'm not the type of person who buys collectibles or drawings to hang it on my walls. You know, when I was a teenager, I was okay. like that. But I, I'm on the same. I'm on a boat right now that I just want my whole life to be packed in a like bag. You know, that's how I want my life to be. Like just okay. everything be Fair fitted enough. in a bag. Like I'm kind of, like I. All my t-shirts are the same. Like a SpongeBob. You know, like you know the SpongeBob <laughs> so where all the, like honestly yeah, it's kind of like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I, I, I love that. I love me. You know, I love having no stuff you know it's so liberating mm-hmm. but when you think it, but but also at the same time the thing is you know not all people are like that yeah. weirdos are like that like me yes, so I there are a lot of <laughs> there are a lot of people who actually you know want to buy stuff you know that are of course related to the stuff they love like you know video games movies series like just there's so many opportunities like if you just get good at the medium like honest classic medium yeah for sure oh my god like, it's oh. like there's that hands-on aspect about it versus you know getting a digital piece and not just that there's like an impressionist feel to classic yeah. physical stuff yeah so like knowing that this person has to physically make it you know with their own hands and like you can physically like feel it you can hold it you can hang on your wall like you know it's just a completely different thing and like I'm not dissing digital artists at all. It is a completely different skill set, and it's a skill set that I don't have, frankly. Um, I suck at digital art, honestly. So I respect people that do digital art, um, but, yeah, I agree that there's a whole untapped market for, like, using traditional methods and, like, mediums to express, you know, these, like, modern video games and shows and, you know, all these pop culture universes. Yeah, and wow, but mostly I just realized something. It's like it's not just those. Like, I, like we talked about everything. We made a lot of points. Sure, all of them are true. But at the same time, for me personally, for, if I want to put myself in the perspective of someone who's wants to buy like a collectible like that, I think it's mostly because it's really impressive and interesting because you don't see stuff like this much. It's like a yeah. unique, out of place thing. Because, like, the subjects of, like, I don't know, rugs, like, decorative rugs are, like, know, landscapes, like, nature, mountains, and stuff like that. But when you see in that cell, there's, like, you know, I don't know, there's just a war thug, Master Chief riding a war thug to the sunset, or I don't know, something like that. It's, mm. it's like, whoa, my yeah. friends are going to love this. See? Yeah. This sentence. My, I need to take the picture of this and send it to my friends. I show it to my friends. I'm like... Or surprise my buddy who loves Halo or something like that. Yeah. Because these are the questions and things you need to consider when you want to sell a product, when you want to uh, like actually be make a successful product. See what's going to go through the customer's brain when they see that thing, mm-hmm. you know. And that is, I think, really important. And um, yeah, actually, yeah. Have, has anyone ever? like you know approach you and ask if they could use your designs for tattoos i'm just curious yes that i i get that question a lot um wow so either it goes two ways either they commission me straight away to do a tattoo design specifically and i'll draw it and i'll get it done up or sometimes you know i'll do a drawing and either it's for them or maybe for someone else but they want to turn into a tattoo or like they just show their tattoo artists my drawing and then they just do it. They, like they don't ask, they just do it and they show me after. And that's cool. Like uh, I like it. Um, so it's, it's that's what I love about um, 
you know, being able to share my eyes because people can, you know, transform it into a whole different new, like, I don't know what you call it, like a medium, you know, it's yeah. on paper, now it's on skin, you know, it's pretty cool for it to become that. Um, I've had like, I've had some customers also, you know, turn my art into like, on you know, like a metal plate. I don't know what you call that, but um, I think there's a website called Displate or something. Displate. That, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there's that. So that's it's always cool to see. Like, I, I never have an issue with people doing that. Like, I find that really cool. People finding new and like creative ways to use my art or like display my art. Um, yeah, it's all part of the process. Yeah, and yeah, every, all of the things you just said is cool, but please don't try to take the designs and sell them as your own on Etsy or other <laughs> yes. places because I'm hundred percent, I'm hundred percent sure that happens. I've had yes, I've had people pretending that my art is theirs. I, I haven't encountered anyone selling it yet, not that I've detected, but definitely you will people... if you find there 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 are there are some China. Oh shit! I shouldn't probably say that, but there, because it happens a lot in this chance. No, <laughs> so, I, I agree. I'm gonna get cancelled so much. <laughs> yeah, like I'm like, listen, there's some stereotypes like you know that have like as, as scam calls uh, call centers in India, like the Nigerian prince, the Chinese yeah. Etsy fake, like like get offended. I don't care. Like you know, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to anyone else who's listening who might get offended. But yeah. It happens, unfortunately. But and um, there was this guy. I think you know. There's this famous artist. Like I think he was Scandinavian or something. He recently, you know, those in 2014, 15, there was these drawings, illustrations everywhere of these galaxy wolves and moons and stuff like that. You know, it was on bags and t-shirts all over the world, everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Apparently, the artist who made this paid a lot of money to his legal team and took down about two thousand Etsy shops who were selling his designs and all and we've seen all his is like one of those artists that his design is part of pop culture at this point but yeah. no one knew who the artist is and I actually found his twitter and he bought it and he actually showed a picture of a house key and he bought a house with the money he got out of like you know uh, the people he yeah, sued yeah and he, w- he was getting a lot of death threats from chinese accounts or something like that and that just reminded me of that and um yeah, just the copyright system, like we talked about this before we started the podcast, the copyright system mm. in the world and everything is just a joke. And yeah, like yeah. It, it, it will never get fixed, honestly, in yeah. my opinion, the the way things are. it, it in a, We are not going to live in a utopia. We're not in a utopia. It's not going to get fixed. But we have, we, so that's why we always have to stay vigilant to, with what we do. Like, you know, if you want to be an artist who sells stuff and not just that trying not to buy buy from the original artist try to find mm-hmm. look at the about section of links of the source and see yes. where are the social media links where are the Definitely. stuff like that don't just yeah. don't, don't just give your money out to these uh, scammers mm-hmm. you know there's a lot of people that don't do their research you know before they buy stuff so yeah i agree definitely check where you're getting your stuff from check if there's like a legit social media connected to it because it's really important but yeah, I mean, in the case that, you know, what happened to me, I, I don't blame, you know, because Etsy's really, they're trying to protect themselves. So, you know, they don't want to get sued by, like, Microsoft, you know. Um, so that's just that's just what happens when you use, you know, platforms like that. So I think you should have your own website, definitely. Oh, yeah, you I have, do oh wait, wait yeah. a second, you have your own website, I'm sorry. So <laughs> that's the yeah, what I was going to get to is from this whole experience, you know, learning how to adapt is really important, you know, learning... If something bad happens, what are the other options that you have and to like really make use of those? Because I had a website before, like at the same time I had my Etsy, but I put like zero effort into my website because I just didn't have a direct need for it. But after all that happened, you know, you, you realize that sometimes things go wrong and, but you have other, as long as you have other options, you know, you're all good. Yeah, I just had a light bulb moment. Light bulb moment right now. There's like something I need to try after with one of your works. Oh, yeah. um, do you know grease pencil in Blender? What what is it, it exactly? I'll show you after the podcast. But it's a okay. really great tool to make like illustrative uh, stuff in 3D. You know, and I'll show the result to you as well if I've done it. But Okay. Yeah, your your art style because there's so many line arts, you know, line works. Yeah. 
Yeah, that could actually look good in like, you know, with grease pencil. Like imagine one of your works in a style in 3D though. In 3D, yeah. That's yeah, what I'm that's saying. A, that's a thought. I can maybe try that. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, like you out of all of your works, if I have to be brutal honest, the type of stuff like personally, as my personality I love yeah. is the ships, the ship illustrations with the oh, with, yes. with yeah, the yeah. crisp minimalistic, you know, typography you have, you know, down at the bottom. Like that's that's the type of stuff if if I had to get something and frame it on my walls, it's kind of ships like that, kind of illustrations like that. You yeah, know, just like, because Yeah. Yeah, come on. They're like diagrammatical and it's like so different from yeah. what I usually do and what a lot of people do. Like I've received a lot of love for like those ships more than I expected. But then when I thought about it, like in hindsight, it makes sense. You know, it makes sense that people love these so much and like love to order them because there's a lot of people, you know, you either get, there's no, there's no one hand drawing these that I've found at least. <laughs> It's either like official stuff that's, you know, done on a computer by like Halo themselves or something that's maybe like, you know, part of their software and they just like take their models and just like make a um, a skeleton or whatever. But there's no one making art like that. And that, you know, was influenced by like I did a lot of maps and stuff before that. So I like to draw maps and do that kind of stuff. So like really precise work, you know, it's something, yeah. it's something else. Actually, I had another idea. Like this type of designs would really w- work well on a black T-shirt, but the color should be inverted to white. Yes. Like imagine that. Like I'm, I'm sure people. Yeah, like there's so many things you can do with your stuff. Like honestly, like the yeah. possibilities are limitless. But it's just um, it 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 all comes boils down to like physical and mental and emotional energy <laughs> that <laughs> we have in life. To be honest, to see how much the thing I we can do. I have a lot of that at the moment, which is good. It's just, awesome. it's just time. Like, you know, I still want to be creating new works, but then I have to balance it with, you know, what can I do with, you know, the existing art I have, you know, I've, I've branched into stickers, I've done, you know, shirts and stuff, but there's still like, you know, I could do keychains, I could do other stuff, like other merch. There's just, yeah, a lot to explore, which is like the best part of, you know, making art. There's just so many ways you can. Yeah turn one drawing into so many different things yeah definitely and by the way for anyone who's listening our our today's guest is actually our first guest from australia like out of 242 guests i mean i had another australian before but he was living in uk at the time so that doesn't really count but yeah the first (laughs) yeah the first australian you're, you're officially the first australian how does that feel it feels it is a great honor to be the first aussie I'm surprised, honestly. Um, yeah. Is there a reason, do you think? Honestly, like, here's the thing. Like, my the variety of the guests I have is completely random. Like, I don't mm. – like, I'm not looking to headhunt people from all over the world. It's just <laughs> they happen to be, like, you know, mostly European or American, yeah. I guess. Yeah, that's, that's um, But, yeah, like, the, yeah, that's weird. There's not much Australian artists in comparison. Or maybe I'm the, just not looking hard enough. I don't know. <laughs> but, I have a good handful of, you know, great Aussie artists. Um, but I'm not surprised that a lot of them are. Yeah. yeah. Australia is still a bit. Yeah. <laughs> mm. But it has a good gaming industry, actually. Relatively. As in, like, community? or industry? No, just game industry. There are a bunch of okay. good studios down there, yeah. I think. And oh, I forgot the name, but there was this huge game they actually released recently. One of the studios from Australia, but um, yeah. So let me ask you something else. How does your process usually work anytime you want to start working on a new piece? Basically, what does the structure of your pipeline look like? Okay, so usually I have like a a sheet or a page or like a doc full of ideas that I want to draw. Right now, there's at least. I have at least 20 ideas right now in my notepad just waiting. Um, But usually, you know, I'll get some ideas down. They either come from myself or some of the people recommending me stuff or my friends, you know, suggesting, oh, you should draw this, you should draw that. Um, So I get those ideas um, and I'll get all my reference picks. Sometimes I already have them. Like I have, you know, so many folders and so many pictures on my iPad that I use. So I, you know, create albums and stuff. Uh, Halo, like I have the most 
obviously content for, but um, I will sometimes use my 3D modeling knowledge to for the more um, realistic portraits or stuff that I'm doing or maybe like certain scenes that require a particular pose, I will actually use, I use Maya. So I'll, I'll like get the models and like I'll frame them and like pose them and what I need, render it, and I'll use that as my reference pick. Um, when I don't have that, it's a bit difficult um, and it's usually the more traditional approach, you know, draw like a skeleton, like a just a naked body and then add stuff onto it but yeah you know I just do a simple sketch um I'm not the type of person to be too like pedantic with my sketches I do keep them a bit rough because I I would like to say I'm at the stage where I kind of know what I'm doing so it's just so I know where everything needs to be maybe do a little bit of a rough shade but yeah um depending on what medium I'm doing you know I'll just start lining or start coloring after that and yeah, you know, I have a finished product. I'll stamp it with my um, Chinese stamp, which is my signature. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's, it's not too not too fancy of a process. All right. And um, who are some of your favorite artists and designers that have inspired you the most? Okay, so I, as you pro- might know. I do do, you know, I go to cons, so I go to conventions like Comic-Con that we have down here. Um, I haven't done any outside of Australia yet. So a lot of the artists that I am meeting there are Australian. So, you know, I'll, I'll meet artists, artists artists of all types, you know. Either they might be big, they might be small, it doesn't matter. But even if they don't do a style similar to mine, I'm always getting some kind of inspiration from them, whether it's like the products they're creating, like how they're turning their art into different things to sell or, you know, the poses, the lighting, whatever. It could be anything. It might not even be something that I know. Like it's just an interesting image and that's, you know, enough to inspire me. But some notable ones, um, Warwick Wong, he was the first artist that I met at my first con that I did where I didn't know what I was doing, but his art is quite similar to mine, you know, black and white. He uses ink, like a brush kind of technique, but he does mainly do traditional, but he will blend it with, like he'll finish most of his pieces off digitally, which I don't do at the moment. I, I do it all strictly traditionally, but he does have a similar style. And I was really inspired by how he, you know, did that. Um, but other than that, Hintaro Mura, so the, the author and artist of Berserk, the manga, is really, really big inspiration of mine. And, you know, I've, I've had a lot of compliments saying that my, my work is very similar to his, like in my terms of my line work and my brush work. So he's a, yeah, those two are, would be my, my standout inspirations. Yeah, actually, I kind of notice that your work is kind of like really similar to i was like wait it's kind of like berserk kind of style yeah and I saw, of, of course you it it, it kind of doesn't help that you also drew guts a lot you don't <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah but, but the, even before that like before yeah. i even knew berserk existed there were already those similarities and what i what is the, the great thing about sharing my art is that people will point these out to me you know they'll point out oh your work is really similar to this person or this you know, game or this um, manga or whatever. And that leads me to, yeah, discovering new things. And that's one of the reasons why I, you know, got into reading Berserk and, you know, falling in love with Berserk is actually through that. And you finished all the chapters or you're still in the middle? Nowhere close. (laughs) Oh, I did something actually really, like all of my friends, you know, hate me because of that, because uh, I... I was too lazy to actually start downloading the mangas or something and read them. But of course, I definitely want to check out the mangas by themselves because I really love Berserk as well. But Mm -hmm. uh, there's this video on YouTube with it's like three hours and it explains all the plots in one go. All the arcs? All the arcs, everything without losing any details while showing the panels of the manga as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I kind of did that. (laughs) I mean, I, I watched the. I, have you watched the movies? 
the golden I watched age. the night. I watched the nineteen ninety seven one. Yeah, there's like a, the golden age arc, and there's like three movies. No, I haven't watched any of the movies, oh, okay. but I've I, I've seen footage of the three D versions, which was ah uh, not my cup <laughs> yeah, of tea. Yeah, it's a bit but, different. Yeah, yeah, but it would. Oh my god, I I never actually understood why did the nineteen ninety seven one got cancelled. I wouldn't know. Yeah, and like that, like that's just such a you know weird thing. Because imagine if it got continued. Yeah, Damn. exactly. That would be so cool. And yeah, like, but but it's actually kind of like a fitting way because you that's like a g- g- gateway drug to Berserk. You yeah. watch this, you in- introduce that to your friends, and you see all the memes and posts on the internet about referencing Berserk. I'm like, all right, I should give this a try. And they watch, yeah. and at the end, they're like, no, I want to see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Then the person gets crazy and goes and down- downloads the mangas, watches yeah, videos on YouTube. To read it. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and you get j- just thrown into the rabbit hole, I guess. Yeah, but it's a good rabbit hole. It's, it's, a, it's a very good one. <laughs> But you know what? Now, actually, that we're talking about Berserk, like, um, all right, just I'm going to give a warning, a spoiler warning, all right? Uh, for anyone who wants to experience Berserk, we're going to talk a little bit about the plot of Berserk right now, all right? So uh, if you want, yeah, I'll put time skips down below, you know, when the spoilers end. So, you know, just to be sure. And all right, so here's the thing. I, I'm going to give, I'm going to say something that a lot of people might disagree, but honestly, they a lot of people say Griffith is like the epitome of evil and it's the most evil person in all multiverses and fiction, but that doesn't yeah. really that honestly that didn't seem really evil to me. Like it's just a power hungry personality who just sacrificed all right, even even if it would be sacrificed to loved ones yeah, or family. Just I mean, does whatever it takes to get what he wants. I mean that that's really reasonable for a character like that, you know? So you, <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I mean, agree that he, he's not. He, he's not. I, I would say evil. evil either. Yeah. I mean, he's. I mean, he's evil, all right. I'm not saying he isn't, but yeah, not not evil in the sense that, like, he's doing it just to be evil. He has his own motives and he has his reasons. This is just the way that he achieves them yeah and for yeah, most exactly. normal people it's a messed up way but that's just how he is yeah i can think of much more deplorable and evil and more disgusting villain than griffith like much more like i don't want to even of course obviously this is an art podcast and i don't want to get mon- demonetized or something but uh yeah like there's way more evil things that yeah just all right just for a service for anyone who's interested um you can Go on Wikipedia and just search a list of banned movies in history of cinema and go read the plots of those. If you ever done that or you ever went down that rabbit hole, you can find some very, very disturbing stuff. Yeah. And the shocking thing was they were all made by a crew, a film crew. So, yeah, that's even more, you know, shocking to me as well. That how did that happen? They had it even get made, yeah. Yeah, I mean, of course, like, it wasn't like... I mean, the reason that happened, of course, obvious, because it was a movie, and the devs and everything that happened wasn't actually real, it was effects, but still, yeah. the depictions... Um, ah, yeah, they're, they're not so nice, you know? Let me just say that. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So, let's see. Let me just put the timestamp as well. Just a sec. I'm sorry. All right. From 3130 to 34, we have spoilers. Wow. And all right. So actually, I have another question. Um, what led you to, you know, uh, gravitate towards the kind of s- subjects that you're doing as your artworks? I mean, of course, the, the, the easy answer is that, you know, well, that's just what I like, but what exactly gravitated you towards those? Now that's my real question, you know. Hmm. Yeah, that's a. I mean, that's an interesting question for me to answer. Besides just saying, you know, that's what I like because that is it is true. That is just what I like. But hmm, it's it's a mixture of things because 
obviously, you know, I start off with Destiny and Halo, so drawing a lot of mechs. No uh, human figures, no faces in sight because that's what I did not like. So, yeah, definitely like the first few years of me just drawing, um, I avoided faces and anatomy like the plague. But I think as time passed, you know, you, you want to challenge yourself. You want to get good at those things that you're scared of. You know, that's how it should be, especially with art. You know, you shouldn't avoid things that scare you or that you feel you're not good at. There's only one way to get good at it is to, to do it. But what helped me a lot was not being scared or sharing my art with other people, especially my friends. Uh, I've encountered a lot of artists that are too, especially amateur, I'm talking more like, you know, just starting out, that are very scared of sharing their work or very scared of asking for like feedback or for opinions, which um, I don't think you should be because there's a lot you can learn from that. So obviously as my my art has evolved, I've, I've gone away from just doing Halo and, you know, robots and stuff. Um and I've come to enjoy, you know, I used to hate drawing anime, okay? I, I used to hate it. But now I love drawing, you know, berserk and, like, manga-style art because I've had people, you know, influence me, show me how much they love these, you know, universes and these worlds. And, you know, they it's an honour for them to come to me asking, you know, to get my interpretation or my own, you know, um, twist on those things. So I've come to really enjoy, you know, doing stuff that I used to hate because people, you know, show that they love my work and that they, they want to see me do something special to it. Yeah, I mean, there's like a couple of other like mangas and animes that a lot of people who are fan of Berserk are still like. Um, and they're always fan arts of the ca- main characters here, like Villain Saga and Vagabond yeah, yeah, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, those two are the main ones, yeah. Yeah, like Villain Saga, Vagabond, and like Berserk, and sometimes it, like I've seen another thing that's actually been really popular as well, like Baki Hanma. I don't know if you know it. Like, is so. actually I I finished the second season on Netflix last night. Actually, is it okay? It might not be your cup of tea because it's kind of like you know, it's over the top when it's actions. And combats, you know, action scenes. Okay. It's kind of like a martial arts thing, but it's really yeah. entertaining. Like okay. the thing is, it's really entertaining, honestly, <laughs> and not in a fun way, but yeah, it, it does the job well as an entertainment piece. Let me just okay. say that. Yeah. And um, yeah, the next thing I want to ask you is, what are you working on right now that you can tell us about? I mean, uh, of course, if there's no NDAs or contracts involved, could you explain to us what you're doing right now? So right now. Um... I'm kind of in the in the downtime, so I'm preparing for my next cons. So usually, in that time, I like to produce some new works. Um, if you did read uh, the little interview I had with Halo, I did hint that I was working on a new Blue Team series. So that is what I'm starting. Um, I'm actually going to have a a little reel posted up in a couple hours, hopefully, if I edit it on time. Um, just working on that. Um, but other, other than that, um, I'm aiming to do some more paintings because I really want to get better at that. Um, I, I like where my paintings are at, at the moment and they do receive a lot of love because, you know, as we discussed earlier, it's that whole idea of like taking, you know, a landscape that we just see in the game that we just, you know, have seen on the screen but turning it into a painting, you know, like um and no one does that that i know of so people really love those so i'm I'm really i want to get better at doing that um getting more detail in there getting more just life into that but yeah those are the main things i'm working on right now all right and those are the things you're working on right now, but aside the things that you're working on right now, which is, of course, in the realms of art and design, yes. what other stuff you have going on in your life? Like, you know, what other non-art-related stuff you have, you got going, like hobbies, activities, or things you want to pursue? So, yeah, as I mentioned, I just finished, you know, studying, basically. So I'm looking, looking for a design job, looking for a way to also apply my design work. 
I do do freelance graphic design work on the side. Um, I don't post any of that anywhere because it's usually just like private stuff. But I am working on, um, it is on my Twitter. You know, I've been featured a couple of times, but I'm working on a, uh, what do you call it? A tabletop RPG game called Cyber Blood. So it's a cyberpunk tabletop game. And I'm doing, just doing the graphic design work for their book. So they're releasing two books and I've just done the work for them. And that's still ongoing. So I'm also doing that um, on the side. But other than that, there's not too much going on. Now it's a very quiet time in my life. And it's more just brainstorming ideas and kind of preparing myself of where I can take things now. All right. And well, with that being said, we reached the end of this podcast. And the last question, which is called Time Capsule, and I'm going to, I think you, by the name of it, you can kind of guess, you know, how it's going to be. But let me just give it like a quick description. Let me just paint the scenario for you. Now, actually, that scenario kind of always backfires. So I'm going to say it in a different way. <laughs> Okay. Um, if you could summarize everything you've learned till now, everything you've learned in this life, you know, till now, if you could summarize it into a couple of sentences, a couple of advices and tips, wait, actually, this is such a good way to ask the question from now on. Okay. And <laughs> what would you say, you know, to anyone who's listening and who might be listening to this podcast and at any point of time in the future, if you could distill your whole experience what are those? Hmm. Um, I would say take risks, do what you love, and hmm, what would be my last one? I don't know. Just find what you're passionate about and devote your time to that because if you do that, you will be rewarded in great ways. All right. That's, that's actually very short, sweet, and straight to the point. And, well, thanks so much for coming by. Where can people f find you if they had any questions or wanted to say hi? Um, Instagram is probably your best bet. So, you know, Instagram at entrancing with an underscore at the end. Um, just you can shoot a message. I yep. reply to all my messages there. Or Twitter as well. Um, it's just at, oh, sorry, it's called X now, um, mm. at entrancing. Okay. No, it's Twitter. No, it's Twitter. I'll never call that. <laughs> no, X. I agree. It's still Twitter in my mind. But... No one is going to call that X, honestly. I swear. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I hate it. I, and just, I'm, I'm going to go on a side note. Like, you know, these artists try to make things happen. Like, they make different platforms, you know, because, oh, yes. let's go. To, I think, like, a lot of people will hate me. Like, I'm not opposed to it, but let's be practical. It's not going to work. Like I'm sorry, I'm sorry to be the pessimist in the group, <laughs> yeah. but people are still gonna use the Twitter. I'm sorry for a second, I said X. Are still gonna use Twitter, you know? And they're just, they're just gonna do that, you know? I think the best bet for artists is to just make I don't know. No, actually, no. That's not, I was gonna say huge Discord server, but that's not a social media. So I think you know everyone can do their own thing, and that's fine. But if you want the same results and grow as an artist and make connections, it, Twitter is still the place. Like. It's not going anywhere, you know. The, yeah, yeah. I I hate how it's become. Trust me, like don't don't get me wrong. I hate how it's become. Like here's the thing. Right now, the by the way, you can message if you're if you don't have a Twitter like a verified Twitter account, you can message her on Twitter right now because you really? need to have yeah because it gives me the for some accounts it does for some accounts it doesn't for, for yours it does oh. get verified to message this user only verified users can send direct message requests to people that don't follow them sign up for twitter blue to continue yeah it's kind of weird oh. it's kind of random you know because i <laughs> because i also message a lot of artists who don't follow me as well but i can message them but it's just kind of random i don't yeah. know what yeah. what kind of settings is that like yeah, I, I, <laughs> I yeah, don't think that should be a thing. Like, you should just be able to see who requests to message you and then just filter it yourself. I don't think they should yeah, do that. Yeah, just like Instagram. Yeah, just like Instagram, yeah. Yeah, social medias are weird. I wish we were back in the days of just emailing and just websites and blogs. Yeah, I literally it's not like got a grandpa. <laughs> someone invited me i don't know if you've heard of blue sky 
Yeah, there's Blue Sky Mastodon, but listen, everyone's going to join. Yeah. It's just going to be a one happy, happy family, but no one's going to use it in the end, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just like, like threads. I don't know if you use threads. I've never installed threads. And listen, I, I just, when I saw threads, everyone was downloading threads, I got pissed because I'm like, I hate social media already. I'm just going to have Twitter, <laughs> LinkedIn, and Instagram. I'm not going to do anything yeah. more. I don't care if people get on. I Just stop with the different social medias. I don't want it. Like, like the only reason I still have my by the way Twitter and YouTube and stuff like that is because of the podcast. Like that's mm. it. Like right, yeah. Like even, even my Instagram, you know, honestly, even my Instagram right now is just because of the podcast. Like I mm-hmm. message you with my own Instagram. Yeah. You know? And yeah, like why make life weird and difficult for no reason? I like what? Because here's the thing, people who are gonna be in contact with you, they will have you can give them your number and you know that that's fine, you know. People who actually contact it, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. And, and if you ever, like, listen, even in the professionals, that's in terms of your friend circle. And even, let's say, in terms of, like, you know, professionals, things and like that, there's always LinkedIn. And also, most professionals reply to emails a lot more than messages on social media. So, there's that. And, yeah, just... I, I don't want to sound like see, I'm such a cool guy. I don't like social media. I'm so, <laughs> so, like, like, I'm not going to try to be that kind of person. But honestly, I, I hate social media. Like, because there's yeah. not, there's nothing. Oh, uh, yeah. It's just, yeah, let's move on. Let's move on. At, at the end of the day, you know, social media is to, it's not to contact your friends, not to contact people. It's to share stuff. Watch share cat memes, videos. Watch cat videos. Brag about, you know, what's going on in your life. It's, it's for that it's, it's not for actually talking to people you know yeah and well 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 again thanks so much for coming by and thank you to anyone who tuned in and listened to us talking in this episode I hope you enjoyed it as always leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions or comments or critiques or just anything in general you know you can just sort of message me on the po- podcast page of the on Instagram and with that being said take care everyone stay safe till next episode bye bye